back. Now's your chance. Oh, oh good, oh, good, good evening Tink. and welcome to the return of the Pinkin Show for the new season, your hour of live, dedicated Norwich City live. programming that will help us all make the most of this football ride we love so much. Uh, we hope you've had a lovely, relaxing summer. Me, I've been watching Game of Thrones for the first time from scratch and growing a beard. You're welcome. Uh, we are live right now on YouTube and our freshly relaunched Pinkin YouTube channel. You should definitely go and check out some of the earlier videos as well. There are some real classics in there featuring myself and Mr Ian Clark, I believe. Uh, we are also live on Mustard TV in Norwich, of course. And in the next hour, we will look ahead to the new season, bring you bang up to date with what happened since John Ruddy said goodbye back in May, and look ahead to when it all kicks off this coming Saturday at Craven Cottage. What a place to start. Hey, uh, as for here in the studio, alongside me as ever, we've got my main man, a Norwich City legend in Darren Eady, plus Woo! Eastern Daily mm. Press Canaries columnist Ian Clark and City Stato, as well as brand new proud dad, hey. David Spud Thornhill. And as we are live, 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 live. Uh, it means you can get in touch with us right here in the studio while we are on air live. and to this very phone. Simply post your thoughts and questions in the live chat on YouTube uh, and set, you can send in a tweet with the handle at Pinkin or give us a bell on the old phone, the number you need is 01603 63 006. Right, let's bring you some of the key headlines for what has been a rather busy summer. You wanted some, they give it ya! Yes, change and lots of it. Sporting director Stuart Webber lets seven slide out of contract, or bar two of them have new clubs. Uh, two of them will also be popping up for Wolves during the season too. A total of 19 players have left City this summer, while nine have come in, plus numerous coaching staff changes and all sorts in between. City have made about £20 million in fees this window and spent a few million in return as they try to balance the books. It's fair to say it's been a far from quiet summer. Our pun pledge. Fitting silence. Of course, the biggest change came at the end of May with Daniel Farker's appointment as Norwich City's first foreign coach, fresh from Borussia Dortmund's second team. It's the David Wagner pathway revisited and Stuart Webber will hope for the same result as Huddersfield too. Anyway, here's to a full season of being content and somehow avoiding all the obvious Daniel Farker puns. I know, we've got no chance. They'll be like watching Brazil. Yeah, you've missed the singing. Everyone's missed. No, OK. Uh, <laughs> it's pre-season mm. and City's new signings are being openly, uh, openly judged on how they perform against League Two clubs and unfamiliar German opponents. It means everyone gets excited about what they're looking at, when in reality, we have absolutely no idea how any of this will look when the championship rat race hits its straps. But let's be honest here, we're probably more excited about the prospect of this season than we were about the last one. <laughs> Life's a pritch until October. Uh, Pre-season breeds injuries. You just hope they're not long ones. Tim Closer and Alex Pritchard both went down at Cambridge United. And although Tim may not be out for too much longer, Alex is set to be out until October, which is particularly painful. And uh, spare a thought for Lewis Thompson. He ruptured his Achilles for the second time in the summer and now faces a battle just to get back playing, uh, which won't be for some time yet. Big shame that for both Lewis and City. And finally, Proper preparation prevents past poor performance. Uh, it was an eight-game pre-season where the heavens opened, where City scored freely and conceded the odd softy, and Christoph Zimmermann refused to have a break. Machine! Rather than me rattle through what happened, here is a lovingly crafted wrap-up. <laughs>
Ah, lovely pre-season. We've got uh, questions flowing in already on the YouTube live feed. Apologies for some of the picture quality, though. Uh, slightly dodgy feed, but, you know, I'm sure as long as you can hear us, that's fine. Darren, Ian, Spud, as I'm just going to call you from out right now. That's all right. I'm so happy with that. Happy with that's that. what uh, good summers. Welcome to the show. Welcome back. It's gone Thank quick. It's quick. It's gone quick, and it wasn't what I was playing. Yeah, it seems to have come around all of a, all of a sudden. Um, uh, but I'm excited. Yes. Optimistic. Yes. Which is a bit of a weird feeling. Is it? Norwich City season. Because I mean, there's been a lot of change, and we, we this was what we spent all last year talking about, I suppose, isn't it? Yeah, you've gone from Alec now to Farker. Is that right? Was it not Fark? Is it not just Farker? No, it's definitely no. Farker. Yeah. Is it? I sure? never get my pronunciation wrong. Okay. Right, <laughs> right, right. Yeah. Well, you guys? Yeah. I mean, most fans I speak to are enthusiastic, mm. positive, um, but haven't got an expectation that we're necessarily going to romp it or maybe even be, you know, definite to the playoffs. But it seems to be a, 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 an understanding it's going to be a, a longer-term project, that we're not going to maybe hit the ground really running really quickly. It's going to, we're going to have to be patient and just, you know, bed in and, and, and get those injuries back, you know, those key players. But, yeah, I think everyone's pretty um, upbeat. Well, well, we'll obviously get a sense of this when people start ringing in and sending their messages in and what have you, but I'm guessing in, as a studio we're, we're kind of excited and I'm probably going to be patient in oh, terms you've of... Got to be you've got to be patient. Um, I think it's the most optimistic um, uh, manager we've had for ages. Um, I think the feeling is going around the city. Everyone's um, happy with it and we've got to be patient and he's building for the future. So it might not, even be, this, might not be this year but hopefully in the next year or year after, we will have a second round. You're going to give them the time. Fans patient, no chance. Well, ah. um, I mean, it is the Daniel Farker re regime. We can see some of, uh, of what they've been doing in, uh, in training at, at Colney. Uh, it's been pretty intense stuff. I think mm. days off have been shortened uh, few and far between. And also, every pre-season friendly we've seen, they've had a session before it. Yeah. So, we, we know, we're seeing them full, fully pushed. Well, they're working them hard. And, and quite frankly, I think, to a man, I think last season, we probably all thought they weren't fit enough. I think that was evident from right from the start of the season right through to the end. And uh, he's certainly not leaving that to chance. He's, he's pushing them hard. Um, but the lads will enjoy that. You know, that's, that's what they want in pre-season. They want to feel pushed. They want to feel the new managers coming in and making impacts and doing something different. And he's doing that. So I think they'll be... It's, it's a fresh start for everybody. And that's the exciting thing. Do we know how it's going to turn out? No, we don't. It's a flip of a coin. But... I certainly like what I'm seeing so far. Uh, and the coach, we'll get onto the player changes in a moment, but the coaching changes are pretty significant, mm. aren't we? We've got a whole wedge of, of German coaches who have come across basically from Borussia Dortmund, two who have joined uh, Daniel Farker. Um, we also had Frankie McAvoy and, and, and Dean Kiley leave. Is that much of a blow? Because there, there isn't much championship experience in that, in that um, coaching setup now at all. I personally would have liked to seen at least one person stayed, i.e., Dean Dean would have been great to stay because I personally believe they say he's the one behind the set pieces. Um, and you, I do feel you need some British in there. Um, I know I've brought up in question um, at the recent forum. It was, where was Stuart Webber? And Stuart, Webber, Dad, and Stuart Webber shot the person down, but I do believe we do need at least one person. I do understand having the German background, but one would be good. But I also think that's, that's the part also most look, Russell Martin will play, because they've, they've kept him in not just for his footman mm. ability, but for the impact he has in the changing rooms, and actually the link between him and the, the coaching staff. Yeah. So I think he will almost fulfil that role. I mean, Stuart yeah. Weber answered it quite well, as you, as you said, Spud. He basically, as he said, they didn't, the British coaches didn't do them too much good at Burton last season, for example. But. And, and if, if they're breeding the hunger, which, which they've all talked about, we want yeah. hunger, and a style of football and a patient build-up and just, just really a, a fresh approach, I, th I think fans will enjoy that. Change always brings about a reaction from, from, from players, so... Fingers crossed! Yeah. They were unbeaten in pre-season, that's a good thing. Uh, well, as we've been saying, there have been a whole host of ins and outs over the summer in terms of City's playing squad. Here's a handy wrap-up.
There we go, there's a lot of names there. And Matt Gregory on Twitter asked me, who are we most excited about in terms of the signings? I don't mean seeing them in pre-season, I mean seeing them in the real stuff. Marley Watkins for me. I mean, I know he scored a great goal yeah. on Saturday, but I think, you know, when, when he came, there was that word hunger again was used and somebody who really wants to prove himself has come from, albeit a team in the same league, yeah. but, uh, you know, a lower, a lower team. And I think that's exactly the sort of lad we want, so I'm really excited about him. I was going to say exactly the same. If I'm being honest, I couldn't remember him last season when he came and played down here. But when you read the vibes on the Barnsley websites and all that, forums and all that, they speak very highly of him and hopefully we have got a star there. Well, I think it's, for me, it's, it's actually someone, people that have been here before but haven't been used the most numbers, like Madison. I think he's, he's mm. going to play a big part for, for Norwich this season like and uh, deserves his opportunity. I think he's, he's a class player and if they can just get him in the right frame of mind mm. within, within the squad, I think he'll, he'll thrive. With Pritchard and Wes both, yeah. uh, that's his real chance now. Absolutely. Yeah. Top on. I, I, and in terms of who City are really going to miss, because we've had some really big departures, haven't we? Jacob Murphy. Mm. Graham Dorrance and Johnny House and perhaps the... We've still got the a fee, so it's not... Yeah. Yeah, still got Josh. Yeah, yeah, yeah still exactly. got... So it's fine on that. But yeah, I mean, obviously John Ruddy going, but actually, you know, Gunny, I know, is his boy for a lot of years since he used to come to the soccer schools and play outfield, but uh, <laughs> he's, a, he's a fantastic goalkeeper. Yeah, I know he's got not much experience, but actually being on the bench a few times for Man City, yeah, I think he'll lap it up. Gents? I totally agree. My only concern is that um, do you think he might need that some more experience just to guide him? Still have him in the first team, but more experience to, to be with him. Mm. I'm, not, I'm not so sure. I think he's a confident lad himself. I don't think he'll have any problems. Taking I him. love Johnny House. Thank well, you. I was going to <laughs> imagine. No I, 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 I am now. missing Johnny, but... Yeah. Well, he's he's we gone now, Clark. Yeah. He doesn't There's want no to come back. We know back. that much. <laughs> Johnny who? Johnny, exactly. Johnny Houston. Houston. Johnny Houston definitely doesn't want to come back. Uh, so, uh, what a City coming up against this season? Well, let's consult our championship weather map, shall we? First up, oh, this is working. Middlesbrough. Uh, City haven't played them uh, since Wembley, yet they've been seriously splashing their cash from one season in the Premier League. Johnny Housen is theirs, as we just mentioned, as is Britta Sombolonga, Martin Braithwaite, Cyrus Christie and Darren Randolph, all being led by new manager Gary Monk. Wolves will be interesting to keep an eye on as well, uh, if only because of the latest bunch of millions being poured into Molyneux, a £15 million signing from Porto and Ruben Neves, and of course the arrival of Ryan Bennett and John Ruddy, the defensive duo. And then there's Aston Villa, who also uh, know how to spend millions of pounds. Steve Bruce is still running the ship, and there were signs last season the tanker was turning. <laughs> That's not a reference to Steve Bruce, by the way. Uh, the big <laughs> question here is whether John Terry's arrival will be a stroke of genius or a major issue. And then there are big spending Birmingham, perennial promotion, hopefuls Derby, and last season's best side in the championship, Fulham. Uh, we haven't even mentioned the beaten playoff finalist Reading or relegated Hull and Sunderland. Never mind the mighty Ipswich town. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Who got that one. ready? <laughs> Jeez, one. this has escalated quickly. Um, is it making you feel daunted or, or confident about the season? I was feeling quite positive. And when you've gone through those, I mean, there are some big clubs there where they've spent a lot they, of money, aren't they? They have spent a lot of money, but Aston Villa spent a lot of money last year, mm. and that didn't get them anywhere, does it? Well, you were mentioning how Gary Monk was your kind of man you wanted as Norwich City manager. Yet, I, th I have a question mark over Gary. I, I just don't I, think I he's do know. Been my, my last kind of last season, I had said bring Monk in, and I'm thinking back, why did I say that? There was no one who appealed to me in the English game, apart from the obvious big ones, but who stood out for you who'd come to Norwich? No, sure. I think they've made the right decision. Yeah, it's going on. where they have. Um, uh, just a little unknown about all the players that have been brought in. They've done okay in pre-season against mediocre teams they've played against, but, you know, we have to wait and see. That's the, uh, the, it's the, the unknown. It really is an unknown for us mm. this season. Drastically, absolutely. Mm. Okay, uh, tips for the top? Uh, Norwich. Oh, Darren. He's on top form today, look. I know everyone's saying it, but I think Middlesbrough are going to take some beating. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I said Fulham. My top two are Fulham and Middlesbrough. Yeah, I think Fulham will be a very difficult uh, proposition. Uh, Ipswich? Bottom? Bottom. Relegated. Relegated. I think, I think there's a, there's a real mm. chance they will. I mean, they've, they've sort of lived by the skin of the teeth for a few years, and this may be the year when the balloon pops. I hope so. <laughs> <laughs> really do. I mean, it must be 50 years or more since they played in, in the third tier, if that. Um, I've got written here, where will City end up? Seems a bit early to be asking that. What are we, 16 uh, minutes into look, the show? If, if they keep everybody fit and get those players back, look, look, are going to play big parts like Pritchard and, and possibly closer and, 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 and a few others, I think they're, they should, they're still a top six side, in my eyes. Mm. They still should be quite comfortably top six. Um, not keep them all fit. Oh. I, and I don't want to languish. The problem is you don't want to languish in the championship for another season because no. parachute payments go again. Well, all of a sudden, your wage structure changes. The then you're talking perhaps three or four years before you, you can progress. Sunderland? 
Nor there's only got a whole host of Norwich City misfits at the moment, don't they? James Vaughan, Lewis Graben, and there's one more I've forgotten. Oh, well, I've forgotten as well. Spud then. don't know, no, no. <laughs> no one does. I can't think of. I honestly believe that um, we're going to be playing similar football to like what Wedding were doing last season with the possession kind of football. Um, and look where they finished. They just missed out on automatic promotion. They just missed out on the, play on the playoff final. And I think we've got a lot better attacking players than them. So I think we're going to have a good season. It'd be good, wouldn't it? I mean, because are we mm. saying that the fans are going to... How patient are the Norwich City fans going to be at Carrow Road we all say when we're they're patient. playing it around the back and people are going, get, get rid, get rid. Well, do you know what? You'll say you're patient until you're five, ten games in and things aren't going well. Then, then all of a sudden things do change. But I think we're all optimistic that it won't it, get to that stage. It's, it's, it's difficult because um, someone who hasn't played professional, I will sit there all nervous. But when you look at players, you're, they're all quite calm. They're about playing and we have to judge. You have to expect them. They're no better than us. We will see. Well, that's uh, what we think. After the break, it's time for you to tell us what you think City are up against in the Championship and everything else in between. We're heading for a break on Mustard, and if you're watching on YouTube, you're about to get some bonus studio time. We'll try to make it as interesting, too, as possible, promise. Uh, either way, uh, we will be reunited in three. Don't go anywhere. Hello, Hello YouTube. We're still here. Yes. We're still here. Um, if someone scrolls up the auto queue, I'll be able to uh, bring up some themes for chats. Ah. Uh, more ah. on championship? Question mark. Uh, Ipswich screwed? Question mark. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we all kind of we, said that they are, so. haven't we? Yeah. Now, Norwich won two 0 at the Valley in pre-season. Ipswich got done six one. Six one. Pre-season, Michael. Later. Don't read into it too yeah. much. You say that though. It's the weekend before the season starts. You'd expect you feel yeah. you're, you're almost your your well, team is going to face its first game of the season, wouldn't you? I'm I'm told pretty reliably they had nine that will start this Saturday in that team. Yeah. Six one. Five 0 down at half time. I mean that's nuts. Incredible. They got one all yeah. second half. They were doing quite well second half. Absolutely nuts. <laughs> yeah. I'm still trying to think of the third Sunderland Norwich City misfit link. I'm thinking of, but there we go. Can't think of that. But the thing is as well, there'll always be another side that comes out of the pack as well you didn't think about. Yes. Always did every year. I mean, Huddersfield oh, a prime example of that this year, Is that going to be Norwich? No, but, it's not going to be Norwich for you, is it? But no, because, I th well, I just think there is someone who always comes out of it and, and has an incredible not, season not, from nowhere. Not talk about Brentford. I yeah. was going to say, Sergi Canos seemed very optimistic and yeah. a few others that... They've had top ten finishes in the last two, oh, yeah, three I seasons. Can't, I can't see much more than a top ten finish from them again, really. You just wonder if some like a QPR or just pull, pull it up, because they seem to every now and again get things or right but do you think Neil Warnock might do one last bit of magic for Cardiff yeah, yeah who, know, who knows they're going to be stronger aren't they? Cardiff will be hard to mm. beat next season we know that yeah. whether they'll be competitive near the top of the table I don't know but I'd, I just think Norwich I'll, look at, I'll still look at everybody's squads in, in the in the uh, oh. oh bye 10 seconds well, well, yeah. bye mm. Well, well, that's back. a good chat, wasn't it? It's a good what chat. A chat yeah. Yeah. You missed out if you weren't on YouTube. Definitely didn't you. just get cut off. Uh, welcome back <laughs> to part two of the Pink and Show, and this is where you, we, hand things over to you yeah. in uh, Talk It's Hard Reading. It's been a while since I've read anything. Uh, talk is cheap, anyway. Uh, throughout the season, your calls, questions, comments, and posts will lead our Norwich City agenda. And of course, tonight you have me, Darren Eady, Ian Clark, and David Spud. Thornhill on standby to chat all things yellow and green and black and grey and purple. So, uh, to get in touch with us here in the studio and to uh, the very phone that I was playing with earlier, I wasn't just being rude, uh, simply post your comment or question in the live chat feed on YouTube on the Pinkin YouTube channel, freshly relaunched. Uh, you can send a tweet uh, with the handle at Pinkin or you can give us a call on 01603 63006. Usual rate supply. It doesn't say to say that there, but everyone well until he says that, so I think I should say it, so I've just said it. Uh, we've already got a phone call. Cool, that wow. was prompt. Yeah. Uh, and it's David. 
Powell, David Powell. Thank you very much, producer Jake, doing a sterling job there in the gallery. Uh, David, what a pleasure it is to speak to you on this fine season eve-ish. Uh, how are you and what would you like to talk about? I don't know. You tell me. I, uh, it's it's uh, a bit gloomy where I am. I'm in Bedford. Um, um, what do you reckon to uh, any new potential signings still coming? Do you think there will be any, Michael? Uh, I have a feeling that they're trying on on maybe one. I don't think there is they need a centre back anymore. I, th I have a feeling they're hoping Tim Closer will be mm. not too far off mm. now, and they might not worry too much about centre half, which probably makes me think midfielder in terms of losing maybe Louis Thompson and maybe still trying to replace Johnny House. And that's what I'm thinking. We've obviously seen them uh, linked with Tribal, is it? T Tom, T mm. Thomas Tribal? I've made his name up there. I, I think, think it must be clear as well, there's still budgets to be worked to. So, so even bringing one more person yeah. in affects that. So I, I wouldn't be surprised to see them go with what they got. I mean, David, David, who would you like to see them try and recruit now? Um, I'll be honest with you. I think I'm quite happy with what they got. got. Um, perhaps one more added addition, perhaps up front, might be a different option. But then... Marley Watkins perhaps will play that role anyway, I would have thought, as we'll probably find out on Saturday. But I think at the back, I think you're right. I don't think we really need anybody else as such. I mean, Toffolo will come back for cover, I would have thought. Obviously, Pinto will come back. Um, I like the way that perhaps we'll play free at the back system anyway, with Yannick Wilshere and um, Hubbard coming up, husband going on the other side. What do you reckon? Yeah, I, I, I think we've seen a fair bit of three at the back, actually more than I probably thought. I didn't mm. think we've, oh, I whether we'll see it when it comes to the championship. Do, do we think Oliveira has been overlooked a little bit in pre-season? Because it doesn't seem like he's, he's, he's talking about him starting the season, is there? There seems to be a lot of like Marley Watkins and Jerome and stuff, but not too much about him, considering the effect he had last season. I thought he, I thought well, he had a great I, season. I think why well, he started with Jerome was, um, last week, because I think Jerome would be more suitable for when we play Fulham. Because I think there'll be more of a threat physically and all that, and I think they will be attacking us more. And I think following week when we play Sunderland, mm. we'll see Oliveira back in. My one concern with Oliveira is his temperament, and if someone gets at him and, and yeah. you know kicks him about a little bit, mm. he could react. So, um, but to me, he's still the best striker. I can imagine got. as well in training, he's not the, the hardest trier. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> like I, a, I think that maybe has been picked up at has times. It? Yes, possibly, oh. quite possibly. Okay. Uh, one more question for you, Dave, before we, we let you, you go. Are you surprised more players haven't left? I know I mentioned 19 earlier or whatever it was, but are you, are you surprised there aren't uh, some of the other players that have left as well? No, I, th I think I think you needed some. I mean, obviously with Naismith staying, I think Naismith's going to be a big key this year. Um, and also, obviously with Russell start, I mean, I'm not the biggest Russell pl fan of, of him playing. However, what he does behind the scenes is very important to the football club. Um, but what I was going to just going back to, to to what I've just listened to, do you think that Cameron Jerome has got to start learning again different ways? Because under under other managers, he was like. Free to, he was running, doing a, a Yannick Wilshere kind of hard working, trying to get a corner. Well, now we've got players that are doing that. And Jerome looked, to me in pre-season, when I've seen Jerome, he's looked a little bit lost in that one up front role. Too long in the tooth to, to change the way he plays his game now, I think. I think mm. you've, you've got the best out of Cameron Jerome, you've got to play the way to suit him. Um, I, I still think they've got enough attacking threat, but he, want, he needs 18-yard box. He doesn't mm. need to be playing outside mm. of that. Really. Superb call. Thank you very much, David. I hope you haven't got Wilshire on the back of your uh, back of your Norwich shirt. <laughs> but great stuff. Really appreciate that. Let's go through some of these comments, shall we, on here. Uh, Canary, hi from Q8. Good to, um, I assume he's watching from Q8. No way of verifying it, but thanks anyway. Uh, Tom Cash, uh, the Norwich Jesus equals Michael Bailey. <laughs> <laughs> Not sure about that. When's it coming off? Well, we could have that debate. I have said if... You know, I'd like it gone by the end Perhaps of the month. Perhaps in stages, like if they score two in a game, you've got to take a little bit a out little, of that. Just a line yeah. off, yeah. or the left side. Yeah. If not, it's score from the right. Yeah. yeah. There, is, there is work to be had here. But it, so it, I hope it, you want to say go for the goatee. Oh, no, no, that's no, long We'll gone. just leave the middle bit. And I don't think anyone really cares about my, my beard. Uh, uh, George Reed, uh, hi, do you think the summer uh, has been good? And uh, do you think was... I can't Can read, read that. Michael what do you Ryan? think about the ins and the outs? Oh, generally, ins and outs from George Reid there. I think there's um, some probably that have stayed that would have liked to have seen gone. Um, but I think they've purely stayed because financially nobody else can afford to buy them. We kind of saw that issue yeah. coming up, didn't we, last season, yeah. I think. I think everyone that the club wanted to get rid of, they could get rid of, has gone. Yeah. Um, clearly, Naismith 
think if if, if he hadn't been out con- if he'd been out of contact, he would have gone. Yeah. But he's you know he's not going to go anywhere is he when he's on whatever whatever he does earn. Well, the thing is, there's but, big changes next summer as well because if they don't go up this season, all of a sudden <coughs> they've got to cut yeah. back again massively. Yeah. You've got to try and shift those even mm. you know those players that are still on that big money. And then do you do get a divide because I'm hearing structurally there's a, a wage cap now compared to what there was before. It's like that and like that. Mm. So you, start Darren, to you, get you mentioned the balancing the books. I can't remember a season where there's been so much talk about you know whatever goes out. Mm. You know, it's got to yeah. got to balance what comes in, almost down to the you know, the last pound. Yeah, very true so. indeed. Uh, Jacob Blades, I uh, think it's good with Vrancic and Zimmerman coming in. Uh, and also a good deal getting Jake about. Uh, also, Harrison Reed looks promising. Agree with mm. that? Yeah, totally. Yeah. Yeah. Lovely. Sam Jeremy is on the phone. Sam, good evening. Thank you so much for taking the time to ring us. What would you like to talk about in your Norwich City world? Yeah, hi, guys. Uh, just wanted to ask you, what do you rate our chances for Saturday, considering uh, Fulham is such a bogey side at Craven Cottage? Which um, I know Daniel Farco is aware of, Norwich City's uh, yeah. hoodoo. At Fulham, uh, Sam, are you going? Are you going to take it in? What? Let's get your thoughts on that first. No, I'm, I'm, I'm going to go to the more dicey away game of Fulham, um, Millwall. Sorry. <laughs> yeah, very well. We'll leave, leave you to to Millwall. You it's say, always good going to the new. You game. say your opinion. What you said earlier? Oh, I can't remember. What did you I say? They've got no chance of winning. This well, game. I don't know if I quite use the word no <laughs> chance. <laughs> I do think. I think. I think Fulham. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, I think I think Fulham are a very good side who <laughs> haven't really lost anything really, no. and we'll get into this in part three. By the way, we've got some great stuff coming up. But you know, Tom Kearney, they've made a five million pound signing yeah. up top as but well. But it's, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's often if you do pull off a win there, all of a sudden there's a yeah. statue of Fark outside yeah. the stadium, and away you go. Mm. Yeah, like I say, never won there since '86. It's got to end sometime. It has to end. I was saying yeah. that at halftime last season. <laughs> well, <laughs> I must admit, I sent all the old messages out saying okay. I was there. And I was really planning to get the T-shirts all ready. And yeah, that was all scrapped. <laughs> that was all scrapped 45 minutes later. <laughs> yeah, yeah, quite. Uh, Sam, let's head it back to you, shall we? In terms of Norwich City generally, maybe after Saturday, say, how are you feeling about their season's prospects? Well, I, I said on Twitter this week, I'm, I'm backing us to get around fourth spot. I don't think um, talk of automatic promotion yet, I, I think, is a bit too optimistic, a bit premature, but... If you just look at the amount of attacking players we have at our disposal, I, I, I said um, on a match of the day, Fred, today, I said I honestly think we have probably some of, if not the best attacking players in the league because we just have so much depth there. I, I think we probably have six or seven in that kind of attacking midfield area. Um, and obviously you've got Jerome and Oliveira who you'd, back to get 30 goals between them. Uh, it's, ju- it's just a case of seeing whether this new formation and, you know, there's talk of three at the back, seeing how this new defence goes. I- I'm confident that Angus Gunn w- will get a lot of clean sheets for us this season. Um, but, of course, that does depend on how this new, new defence works out. Spot on. Sam, thank you so much for your call. I mean, we did kind of say... Attacking-wise, Norwich were fine last mm. season. It was the defensive end that needs sorting out. Do you, do you think we've seen signs of that? I mean, they've kept a couple, you know, handful of clean sheets over the pre-season, haven't they? Well, I think I think our defence has uh, improved over the summer, and we've still kept kept a lot of the quality um, up front, i.e. Jerome Oliveira, Richard. Um, so I think attacking-wise, will be a force, and hopefully our defence being better now. I, yeah, I think I think the new thing is. It, it, is, Fark is, is quite open to changing his way around. So actually, he's talking of defensive four, defensive three, or playing as a five. Mm. It's very adaptable, and I like that in a manager. It changes things up to suit a certain team if things aren't going right. And I think sometimes it doesn't matter how if your defence is playing poorly in a game, as long as you can change things around exactly. to make it better. You always want a plan B, and sometimes I didn't feel yeah. we had a plan B sometimes last And that's season. interesting, because normally when you think of a plan B, you're thinking about going forward and scoring, mm. as opposed to changing things at the back. And obviously, Fark is renowned for his... Defensive prowess, isn't it? Yeah. So I'm, I'm with Spud. I think we do look more solid, yeah. even from the limited amount I've seen so far. Sam, yeah, thanks for hanging on. Uh, let's get your favourite signing, shall we? Who's the one you're most looking forward to seeing in action this season? Well, I, I think Vranich, because there's been so much hype about him, uh, and it, it's, it's a different experience when your managers buy, you know, largely unknown players from Germany. And it's kind, it's kind of exciting and kind of frustrating because you don't know anything about them but I- until you see them in league action. And I- I've heard good things about Vranic, so, yeah. 
Brilliant stuff, Sam. Thanks very much for your call. Um, yeah, Mario Vrancic, I think Dan O'Hagan, friend of the show, was, was quite excited about Norwich picking him up because he, he did pretty well in the Bundesliga and no one watches more football than Dan O'Hagan <laughs> in terms of the Bundesliga. It's a bit, it's a bit like a Johnny Housen, isn't he? Kind of snuck under the radar a little bit and then gets snapped up. And yeah, I think he's a perfect replacement for Johnny, yeah, to be fair. Definitely. I think it's a good bit of business there. And from what I've seen of him so far... I hope I love Mario as much as I love Johnny. <laughs> oh, that was quick. I'm not sure about the hair, though, in, in truth. Uh, right, what else have we got on here? Stephen Moore, uh, what matters this season is aiming for top spot on the 6th of May. This fresh new look has every chance. Mm. I like that. That's, uh, that's pos positive, Stephen. Great stuff. Uh, we've got a tweet, have we, from earlier in the day? Let's have a look at this one. This is from Edward Jacobs. Interesting, re Alex Tetty. Thought he was poor and surrendered possession. Think Reed can play anchor role and expect him to at Tetty's expense. Discuss. Yeah, I totally agree. Yeah. I mean, presumably, if everyone's fit, Reed's going to be in a head He's of Tetty. Be, yeah. I don't think I've not We haven't seen anyone. a lot of Alex Tetty during no. pre season, actually, which is interesting. Mm. Yeah. And again, he's, he's, he's made sort of noises before about leaving the club, hasn't he? So I think that yeah. will go a long way with the manager who remembers those type of things mm. and actually sees that in pre season, brings his people in, he wants to play, that want to play for the football club. And uh, I think Tetty will find himself on the sidelines. It's Tetty's last year of his contract, I think. Uh, do we have yeah. any issues with Harrison Reed being brought in on loan? No, no, don't have a problem no with the only no. time you have a problem with the loanees is if, is if they haven't got the right kind of attitude. But what yeah. they proved at Huddersfield when they brought those type of players in, in Moy and those type of players, that they're hungry to, to prove themselves to kick on their careers again. And I think he's that type of player. If, sorry, if you've got the balance right of you know, new permanent signings mm. and loans, if you bring loads of loans in, yep. that's going to be too many. But um, Yeah, like I say, Road, he brought far too many in. Mm. What we've got, two loan players, Gunnan, yep. Reed, and it's the type of loan. And it's them two are, look hungry. Mm. They really do, and they, I think they're going to stand out. The mm. um, Fraz Max says, "Don't know what to expect. A real unknown with the manager and some of the new players." Yeah, yeah I think he's totally it's right. Exciting. I mean, mm. the lineup is going to be on Saturday compared to the end, finishing one uh, last season. It's going to be. Mm. Well, I don't think we've ever seen such a change, have we? I know. I'm looking forward to seeing what you it guys have got your elevens. Unknown can be. Well, a, it was good for Huddersfield. Yeah, magical yeah. mystery tool. No one knew yeah. who David Strahavka was before no one signed him. <laughs> uh, Roger Mallet has also been in touch. Hello, everyone from rainy Florida. Ooh, Sorry, wow. it's rainy, but I bet it's warm. Uh, he's excited about this season. Uh, I think the German imports seem to be in far better shape, and Farker's team will help improve the fitness of our players from before. We've also got a tweet, I believe. I'm not sure who this is from. It's from In the Cheap Seats. Mr. Cheap Seats. Daniel Farker. They weren't fit enough, and some of them need to get on the weights. Mm. Well, I think it's there something we, we pointed out last season. How many times, times did I ask that times. question last season? Ah, and I said oh, it, it didn't really know all the time. They just looked so unfit on the pitch. They couldn't get through mm. 70 minutes without seeming like they were struggling. But it was it, mentally it? as well, wasn't it? It was yeah. the conceding goals late on and the, yeah. the inability to seemingly concentrate for a full 90 minutes. Yeah, but I think the type of players he's brought in, there's a bit, little bit of mental strength in Zimmerman and, and, and Frank and... And Vrancic, I think they're yeah. players that have got that mental toughness, which will help the others around them. Have we seen a part of that from Farco in pre-season, that he's been making this really tough? He's been trying to foster this. It's going to be really tough during pre-season. I haven't got enough players to name on the bench. You're going to have to deal with it yourselves. Oh, you're playing 120 minutes. Sorry about that. Get on with it. Yeah. Kind of mentality. Yeah. And there is that. And there's also the, you know, OK, players are going to get injured. Mm. But if someone gets injured, it's an opportunity for somebody else, which mm. that's something he said I really like. Yeah. Rather than, oh, you know, got so many players that are injured, we're going to be really rubbish. It's a very po always a very positive, take the, you know, take the best out of each situation. Mm. Uh, Joshua Rope Watts. Thanks for your comment, Joshua. He says, best signing, question mark. Mine is Stuart Weber. Oh, I, yeah. I don't know. I don't know. No. Well, you, did the, you did the forum, didn't you? Yeah. The forum with the Norwich City uh, uh, Fans Social Club, mm. who do a brilliant job, and I'm sure Diane will appreciate the plug. Um, and what, what did you make of that? Because you were on stage there with, with both Stuart and with Daniel Farke and yeah, Steve Stone. And Steve Stone as well. Yeah, I was um, interested to, to listen to, to Daniel Farke particularly because um, he, he liked to talk about how he watches his players individually. Um, sees that doing, I asked him about days off and... and do you have structure to that? And he's like, no, I kind of just see how my players are reacting. If, if we've had a bad game at the weekend and things aren't going well, there might be time for a day off. Or, you know, if they're struggling in training, I'll get them in and we'll eat some cheesecake. So he gets <laughs> <laughs> like his cheesecake. So, he did. But yeah. he was, I think he's very, he's very attentive to detail and, and looking at his players and see how they're reacting. Rather than judging them as all a, one big massive group, I think he'll look at them individually and feel, well, perhaps I need to pull him out, take him in, you know, which is, which is a sign, for me, is a sign of a good manager.
Um, Mention that you can still ring in, of course, 01603 63006. Apologies if, if uh, some of you have got audio issues, issues uh, between the parts and things like that. It's pre season. Just can, you know, it's a bit like um, Alex just warming Pritchard up. getting injured in pre season. Yeah, not fair enough, just yeah. warming up, all that sort of stuff. Uh, what else have we got here? Um, also from Joshua Ropebots, still need defenders. I mean, in terms of who Norwich still need to bring in, do you? Well, I think if you look at every position, we've got um, two for every position now, haven't we? Two players, so I don't think we do need any more defenders personally. Uh, Wilshire's kind of ended up as a makeshift, yeah, right wing back now, isn't he? Yes, which he's, he's a powerful lad. He should uh, should fit him perfectly. Well, I tell you what, he he, st he sort of came in there early in pre-season, basically because they needed some mm. cover there, and you're like, and he just did not look into it, and and mentally looked like his confidence was shot. To be honest, against Brighton, I thought he was one of Norwich's better players, and you think, actually, this could work. Yeah. It looks like um, you would have put Pinto as a certain starter. When he's back fit, would he be a certain starter now? I think, I think he still he, would do, yeah, Wilshire. Will what, what in front of, front of um, Wilshire? Yeah, I think he will be. I think Pinto's earned his, earned his stripes to, to be at that, call out his, his position. I understand that with, with um, last season's managers, but we've got a new manager. So yeah. no, I think Pinto works hard as well. I, I'm not disagreeing that, I'm just mm. saying how well Wilshire has play, played. We will see. Uh, we've got a call out on the line. It is Tony... Tony Bisham, thank you so much for ringing in, Tony. What would you like to talk about in your Norwich City world? Um, hello, hello, Michael. Um, I was going to say, oh, I think we are going in the right direction this, se um, this, this season. Um, I like how Sturt Webber is refreshing things like taking out Malumbu, taking out Michael Turner, Steam Wick Wick, uh, players like that. Um, and I like he's bringing in like Harrison Reed, Vrancic, Zimmerman, Frank, Marley Watkins. Um, and I think we're going in the right direction. Oh, which is great, and we all certainly hope that will happen for Norwich City. What, what's your kind of goal for Norwich this year? Are you, are you willing to give them all season to see how it pans out, and then, you know, if it doesn't work out next season, as long as they move forward, it's OK? Um, I honestly do think we'll be top six this season, like uh, D D um, Darren Eady said. Um, I think we'll finish top six because I think I, I, I was watching us against Brighton in the pre-season friendly and I thought we were really really good in possession um, especially Harrison Reid he's, he's good at passing the ball so I, I honestly do think we finished top six what do you think Michael? Yeah, I, yeah I'm getting put on the spot a lot here aren't I? Yeah. <laughs> I, I think it might be a stretch but I wouldn't count it out and I actually feel it's more likely than last year because last year I didn't give them a prayer. I think what we see a lot this year as well is actually a, a lot more of that youth coming in being on the bench because mm -hmm. it, one thing Alex Neil didn't do is give those opportunities for those young lads was it it's just seven you can have on the bench now and when you're winning a game five or six nil as it did the times last season get them on because it's appearances and as soon as they get on that pitch and make an appearance the value goes up so I'd expect to see a few younger lads yeah. getting involved this season as well. Uh, absolutely. Tony, I'm definitely much more excited, I can assure you of that. Uh, one more question. I'm not going to ask you about Alec Neal and him leaving here. What do you think he'll do at Preston North End next season, now he's in charge mm. there? Um, uh, the only thing concerning with me, with him, is, um, is with his formations. He kept doing the same formation all the time with Norwich. Um, it's when, when the players weren't playing well, he kept, kept, he kept playing them all the time. And that's where I think our problem was last season. Tony, thank you so much for your call and taking the time to ring in. Please do it again over the course of the season. Great stuff. Be interesting, won't it? Alec mm. Neal at Preston. I, I'm almost surprised he got another job so quickly. Is that harsh? I was. I thought he would have gone back up north, to be honest. Um, but no, it's a, it's, a, it's a pretty decent move for him as well, mm. to be honest. After the Actually, it's going to be here. quite a difficult one because Simon Grayson did a great job there. Yeah, yeah he's got a hard act to follow, but... Um, <sighs> I don't know. I was never convinced by the time he was here, so I don't know. Is his squad as good as Norwich's was? No. Oh. Well, not far off it if you look at the table last season. Uh, Aaron, R123, great name. Uh, can we finally win against Fulham, Craven Cottage? If so, a turning point for the club? Well, it clearly would well, be. And we'll for be me, very excited yeah, of them, course, 1986 is a long time ago, but I just think it's the quality that Fulham have got now is, is the danger on Saturday more than the... 31 years of hurt. Yeah. yeah, but a thing like that, though, a result like that, oh, can yeah, set you up for the season. It absolutely. really can. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, Canary, how long is the additional security adding to ground entry? I, I, I looked at it, it was carnage, wasn't it? On it were long queues. Yeah. I think yeah. the idea is 
Probably give yourself 20, 30 extra minutes. Yeah, it doesn't help when someone brings in a slow cooker. Don't take a slow cooker. <laughs> what? <laughs> That's basically the rule. <laughs> someone <laughs> took a slow, slow cooker, cooker and it wasn't <laughs> allowed <laughs> in. It wasn't allowed <laughs> yeah. in. So if you're going to cook How your food, <laughs> get your food cooked before you turn <laughs> it up, and then you'll be all right. Um, Aaron also uh, disappointed. <laughs> Louis Thompson is out again, as are we. And against Brighton, possession and more control of the game than last season shows more stability from Farker's tactics. If they can just get rid of those sloppy goals because yeah. it's still that sloppy goal. That's us done for the opening talk is cheap of the new season. If City start their season like that, we'll be laughing. <laughs> a, a huge thanks to everyone who got involved in this week's show. And if you fancy a bit of this next week, the contact details will be exactly the same. So get watching and get in touch. We'll have some football to talk about too. Uh, as always, if you want to have your say in any future shows, simply get in touch via the pinkfin.com message board or send an email to our brand new email address, thepinkin at archant.co.uk. That's it for part two. We're headed into another break, but if you're watching on YouTube, then stay put for some extracurricular studio activities. Darren's had all summer to plan for this, so fingers crossed. Uh, when we all return, we'll begin the uh, to cast a wee glance ahead at the joys of Craven Cottage. <laughs> uh, we will see you in three. Uh, we're just talking Hi. about Fulham. It, Fulham. Just, it makes no sense that they haven't won there in so long, does it? No. It just makes no sense. I've had right someone, now. someone's asked me on Twitter to say, someone's asked me on Twitter to say, uh, will you ask Daniel Farker about the Fulham hoodoo? Which, of course, we will. But you don't care, does he? He's he's down as a player, does, does a hoodoo no. ma mean anything to a player no, at all? No, nothing. No. But you've got, you've got basically going to have. What, nine new players that yeah. have never played at Craven Cottage before, so, possibly. And the longest serving uh, players, what, Russ and Wes. Yeah. Wes is not playing. How many times has Russell have played at? Yeah, it's a completely well, different team. Four times, times four. four or five. But yeah, they wouldn't, they wouldn't have a clue about it. Perhaps if you just change your name for the day. <laughs> so we're not Norwich City, we just change it to something else for the day. I mean, the, we'll, we'll get stuck into this in a, in a bit, but the interesting thing for me is that Fulham actually did Huddersfield. Completely twice last season. Mm. That's probably going to be more an issue, which might come up in part three. I thought Fulham were better at home. They were. I looked at the the table last, the home table. And I think they were eleventh in the home form, mm. which I thought they were better than that. But still going to be really tough. Best team in the division last season, according to who? They did the double over Newcastle and all sorts. Alec Neal said that. Well, they didn't go up, did they? So I think the best. Yeah, yeah. yeah. random. <laughs> Weird statement. That on is. their day, maybe. Maybe the words I'm yeah. listening to yeah, are missing day. up on yeah. their day. That old phrase. I did have a question here from uh, the plastic Paddy. Hmm? I don't know who that is. <laughs> the plastic. Is it Paddy Davitt? Hey, Pad. Uh, <laughs> no. I, I know. I, I, I imagine it's probably not Paddy, bless him. Um, who will hopefully get on the show, by the way, I'm hoping. Question for Darren When will you be on Talk Norwich City? Oh, whenever they want me on. And the boys I'm, asked? I'm, no, they haven't ever asked me. Terrible. Just, <laughs> Cash, <laughs> I don't think they'll, they'll pay, pay you. Yeah, I don't, I don't think, think they'll, they'll pay. pay you. You get sweets, I think. You get yeah, that's enough for me. Yeah, yeah. sweets and chocolates. They and give me some like... Haribos. Have, I mean... you, have you done? Have you done? It? No, but they Wait, me and Clark have done it. Yeah, I've, I had a cup of tea and some sweets. I got some yeah. strawberries. I think I, I missed the. Uh, I oh, want Haribos. Sweets era. Yeah, I think mm -hmm. you'd get some Haribo. I'm in. But um, but yeah, I get some lovely strawberries. Have you had Haribo? Will you start talking funny? Oh yeah, kids and grown-ups. Love me so. I love. I love. They do such a good job. Jack's, Jack's a great kid as well, and he's got a brand new job. Yes, he has. On actually? ITV. Yeah. Has he? He'll be a journalist on ITV. Whoa. Anglia. Fantastic. So I won't be able to talk to him anymore. Uh, <laughs> I'm only joking. I'm only joking. <laughs> I'm only joking. We'll get Jack on this sofa and Chris. Yeah. All the boys. BBC, ITV. Yeah, yeah. All in. All in. Yeah. Who, who's your dream guest, Darren? Who we got to get on this year? Um, That's a good question, that. God, it's a tough one. Pele. Like to see on. Pele? Pele from the gallery. We'll try. Yeah. How about Simon Thomas? Pele what? He had Simon Thomas on there. Simon Thomas? We could get Simon Thomas on. Come on, he? Surely Can he's still around. Producer Jake, Simon Thomas. Jake Humphreys. Yeah, it's not a problem, he says. Once their Formula One season's over. What's what? Jake Humphreys. Jake Humphrey, yeah. Once the older Formula One season's we, we, finished. Maybe we should get Stuart Webber on. But I think, uh, I think Stuart Webber might be otherwise engaged this week. Depends if we win. If we win, he'll be in. Don't worry about that. He'd be laying across that sofa. <laughs> All right, we yes, see something. I'll come in. Stuart Webber, come on the show. Guys, Stuart. Uh, right. Uh, we, we'll be back in a minute. We're back. Bye. <laughs> <laughs> I 
fine good evening to you all and thanks for staying with us for the final part of tonight's opening pink and show with me darren Eady, ian clark and david spud thornhill so uh, there's an elephant in the room and i don't mean the weird one on coventry's crest well that's no, I don't get that. Uh, it's this coming Saturday and the big kickoff at Fulham. At least the fixture computer has Daniel Farker done him a favour in terms of opening day expectations. That's almost a sentence. Uh, I mean, he couldn't actually go there and win, could he? So, <laughs> what's going on here? Uh, so, what about the Fulham angle? I spoke to Box Nation pundit and lifelong Craven cottager Steve Lillis about his hopes for next season. After all, it's looking good, isn't it? No, I don't know about Fulham spending big in the summer. The only real spend has been on Abu Bane uh, Kamara, the striker that's just come in a couple of days ago. I mean, the, the rest has been guys like Oliver Norwood, who's in on loan. Ibrahim Assisi was pretty cheap. So, I mean, they've been spending. They, you know, I think they've just been... Spend, spending as much as the players that have gone out. Like, you know, the, the team's pretty much stayed together, apart from Scott Malone and Chris Martin, who's gone back to Derby and never really made any impact at Fulham, They've never got off to a bad start with the fans. Um, so it's pretty much as you were from last season on Saturday. But, I mean, I think there are one or two injury worries at Fulham. Yeah, fair enough. The big one, though, surely, keeping Slavica Jokanovic. Yeah, well, keep, well, keeping the manager was vital, and then it's still, you know, it was still rumblings the other day that he's not happy there. I've heard one or two things that, and you know what, I, 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 even now I still would be surprised if he's there at Christmas because um, he has nothing to do with the players that are coming in now. Um, he has say on who can go and who not go, like he authorised Scott Malone's departure, which was great business for Fulham, getting five million for a player you got on a free transfer a year earlier for in a swap deal with, with Jazz Richards. Um, but he's nothing to do with the incoming players. And it's well known, he still isn't happy with the size of the squad. And in the friendly against Wolfsburg on Saturday, he only had six substitutes and two of those were goalkeepers. <laughs> well, yeah, that, that must be a pre-season thing because I think we've had a bit of that in Norwich as well. Um, Steve, Norwich fans hate going to Fulham because it's so long since they've <laughs> won there. How, how do Fulham fans feel about coming up against Norwich? You know what? Every year we, I can go back. I'm, a, I'm an old man, so I can go back. To, I remember seeing Norwich lose to Fulham 4-0 in 1974 when Kevin Keelan was in goal and Duncan Forbes was uh, your captain there. So that's how far back I'm going. They just never win. I think they might have won at Fulham once since. They just never win at Fulham. And you think one year they've got to get a result there. You just go back to the 6-0 a few years ago and... I think if Norwich were ever going to win at Fulham, it was going to be last year. They were 2-0 up at half-time, played fantastic. That was the best team I saw in the Championship last season, Norwich, for those 45 minutes. But as good as they were the first 45 minutes, they were as bad the second 45. Fulham managed to get a draw and could have won the match at the end. So just briefly then, Steve, in terms of next season, who's going to finish out on top between Norwich and Fulham? Oh, Fulham. Fulham, Fulham are going to win on Saturday. I think Fulham will get in the playoffs. I think Norwich will be there or thereabouts next season. But I think the teams you've got to look at next year, the throughout right promotion, are teams like Villa, 
Middlesbrough, and it'd be interesting to see what Wolves do, but I think they're buying players to sell on for more money, the sort of transfer dealings they're doing. But I think it's, that Middlesbrough will be the team to beat. But I think, look, look, let's be honest, it's a poor, poor division, and it's not going to take a lot to get into the playoffs. Um, you saw the run Fulham come on, have come come on from, you know, from that Norwich game last year when they've been struggling and got into the playoffs comfortably in the end. I don't think it's going to take a lot for teams like Fulham or Norwich to make the playoffs this year. Even though Norwich are rebuilding, it looks like they bought. Well, I really like the look of James' husband, the left back, and when he turns up at Craven Cottage on Saturday, there'll be some jealous Fulham fans because he was very popular when he was on loan in the club a couple of years ago. Well, it's great to hear on a number of counts, Steve. Thank you so much for your time. Appreciate it. Pleasure. Smile, Brilliant stuff Smile. there. Now, <laughs> the <Sixers laughs> first pre-match press conference is on Thursday lunchtime, so keep an eye on the Pinkin's freshly relaunched YouTube channel, as well as our Facebook page with the handle at the Pinkin for the top lines from Colney, as well as Mustard News every evening. And, of course, we will be on those same feeds throughout Saturday, previewing the game in the morning and bringing you coverage throughout the day from Craven Cottage, so keep an eye out across our feeds and, of course, especially at pinkin.com. As for the rest of the opening championship weekend, it all kicks off on Friday night with newly promoted Millwall at Forest and relegated Sunderland hosting Gary Rowett's Derby. Saturday's highlights include Harry Redknapp at Ipswich, Alec Neal kicking off with Peony at home to the Owls, Sheffield United back with a visit from Brentford and Borough at Wolves. The Steve Bruce Derby is Saturday's late kickoff while Bolton host Leeds on Sunday. And City are also in action on Tuesday night, Carabao Cup or EFL Cup or League Cup, a first round visit from Swindon Town. How exciting. Opening game, guys. I suppose mm. we've got your 11 first. Yeah. Let's have a look at this, Mr. Daniel Farker. Go for it. Well, I've gone for the same as last week. Um, I was very impressed with it last week. I've gone for Jerome um, ahead of Oliveira. So I think we're going to be uh, moving them both throughout the season. I think Jerome would be more suitable for Fulham than Oliveira would be track the back and doing the work weight a lot more. Um, I think that's a good team. That's, that's a big call. And I, I know that um, Steve feels that uh, Fulham fans will be a little bit jealous in Norwich have got James' husband. Have you been impressed with him uh, so far? Well, he was well, I, I, only, I only really saw him at um, Cambridge and Brighton, but what I have seen him impressed. And the Fulham fans were very impressed with him. Um, uh, so Huddersfield fans were impressed with him. So it's like we've got a good player there. Yeah, fingers crossed. Clarky, yeah. do you have a look at your 11? Here we go. Well, I've got Oliveira up top as opposed to Jerome, and I'm bringing in Murphy as opposed to Yannick. Um, I think it's quite well known that I'm not a massive Yannick fan, and I just think Josh has got so much to prove this season, so I'm really li liking to look at him. Hopefully really... he's fit, which would be the big thing, yeah, I guess, there. Yeah. The only um, concern you've got there is Murphy tracking back, haven't it? Cause he's he's traditionally not, yeah. not, his, not well, so much of his game. And that's what three. he's got to do. He's, he's got to yeah. be told that, and I think... I think um, um, but if Reed drops back and plays that and punt that back through, I, I think with that challenge. three, you've, you've got that yeah. mobility, and I'm, and I'm sure that um, the, the, the head coach will be will be telling them exactly what they're doing. And if he's told mm. to track back, he'll track back. Big old season, isn't it, for Josh? Be exciting. It is. Uh, I think you, you know, as much as they're twin brothers, I'm sure he's a little bit jealous. He mm. let his brothers moved on for so a much money. Bit, yeah. yeah. So he, he needs to prove himself. Um, you know, he was arguably the better of the twins when he, when they first came mm. into the team into the squad themselves. So yeah, he's got a bit to prove, but. I mean, if you get one, rid of one Murphy and you've got another one that can do that, I mean, that's nice, nice replacement. Well, really. Not bad, is it? Not bad for 12 million quid. Uh, although, of course, uh, you know, Jacobs has gone to his hometown club, hasn't he? So, uh, do you know what? I never knew that. No, no, never knew that. It's funny, isn't really it, how that suddenly came up? Uh, Callum, uh, great, great to see you back, guys back on, on YouTube again. Thank you, Callum. Sorry that the YouTube uh, feed isn't at its best. Uh, but what do you think of Naismith? Uh, will, uh, how do you think he'll perform this season? He's got a point to prove. Um, but will he leave, live up to his statement? Obviously, we won't see him on Saturday because he's still suspended from the sending off at Leeds. Yeah, of course he is, yeah. Um, I think that's a tough one because everyone says he's going to be working harder and behind the scenes more, but I don't see him in the starting 11. No, not at all. I don't. No? I, I, I just think sometimes it doesn't work out at a football club for some people, mm. and I think with him it, it's the same thing. I think it's just a club that's not gone particularly well for a move that hasn't gone particularly well, and I think he will, will move on at some point. Let's rattle through the last one then. Key man. Uh, what, uh, quicker. Oh, Vrancic. Mary Vrancic. Mm. I'm going to say like the same, him. but also Zimmerman slash Franca. One, whoever is shining in the middle, if, if one of them can really do it, both really do it, then that solidity will just give us the real step forward. But Well, what I've said was either we walk into or Madison. That'll do for me. Predictions for the game? Oh, my words. I'm going to go with a 1 0 hard fought battle cry from Norwich City. Wow, Clarky. 1 1. 
Oh, so I, I think we're going to lose 2 1. I think they'll lose as well. Oh, oh. You know what? I didn't get to ask you for this season's predictions, so I'll have to save it for next week. And that's it. We are done for opening night. All you need now is still the actual football to start. If you missed any of the show, you can watch it all again on the Pinkin YouTube channel. And that goes for all the build up from Colney and Pinkin Towers ahead of the trip to Craven Cottage and then from West London itself and every game of the coming season. But for now, a big thank you to my main man, Darren Eady, and our top guests tonight, Ian Clark and Spud, as well as to producer Jake and all the team behind the scenes. We'll be back live next week live. at the same live. time of 7 pm mm. on Wednesday on YouTube and on Mustard. Until then, here's to the new Norwich City era kicking off by making history. And either way, at least we know there'll be another 45 to go. Good night.